Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Rakdos aggro deck featuring the full four copies of Embercleave as our big finisher and uh, payoff card for playing some of these larger creatures. A six mana legendary artifact equipment with flash so we can play it at instant speed and costs one generic mana less to cast for each attacking creature we control so we can realistically be attacking with two creatures by turn four and then play Embercleave for four mana to get it in play. And then when Embercleave enters battlefield, we can attach it to target creature we control, and the equipped creature gets plus one plus one and has a double strike and trample, and otherwise we can equip for three mana. So a very powerful effect that can help us close out the games very easily, especially combined with some of our larger creatures, like Rotting Register, which has a base power of seven, so we could potentially be attacking with 16 points of trampling damage on turn four with Register and Embercleave. Then taking a look at the early parts of our curve, we've got plenty of knights and some knights synergies. At one mana, the full playset of a Knight of the Abel Legion, which is a great one drop that can grow over time. And for three mana, we can give it plus three and death touch until end of turn. And then we also have the full playset of Fervent Champion, which is a one mana one one with first strike and haste. And when the champion attacks, another target attacking knight we control gets plus one plus so until end of turn. So even if we have two Fervent Champions, they can both pump each other up and become two one first strikers to deal a lot of early damage. But we've got plenty of other knights that we can target with the champion. And then equip abilities, we activate targeting the champion, cost three less to activate, which means we can equip Embercleave for free onto our Fervent Champion if we get it in play first. So that's a pretty nice bonus. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Black Lance Paragon as a 2 mana 3-1 with Flash. It's also a Knight, so we can play it at instant speed and when the Paragon enters the battlefield, target Knight against Death Touch and Lifelink until end of turn. So that works out very nicely in combination with Fervent Champion, since giving a first striking creature Death Touch means we can take out any creature from the opponent that's blocking our Fervent Champion. The Paragon can also give itself Death Touch and Lifelink, so if my opponent's attacking me and I just need to use a Paragon as a removal spell, we can target itself and uh, block something, gain a bit of life, and take out an opposing ground creature. So very versatile, and the fact that it has flash means you can both use it as kind of a combat trick, but also play it end of turn if you want to play around sorcery speed sweeper effects or counter spells from the opponent. Then we also have the full playset of Dreadhorde Butcher. This is not a knight, but still a very good creature in this deck as a 2-mana 1-1 one, one with haste. And when Butcher deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And when a Butcher dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. And the Butcher also synergizes quite well with Embercleave, because giving the Butcher double strike means that it will trigger twice upon dealing damage to an opponent or a planeswalker, so it can grow very large. And then the one added power and toughness from Embercleave also means it will deal even more damage when it dies. Then next up we've got the full playset of Stormfist Crusader as a 2 mana 2-2 two -two with a menace, also a knight for all the knight synergies. And at the beginning of our upkeep each player draws a card and loses one life. So it is symmetrical, my opponent also gets to draw cards, but uh, we both end up losing a bit of life. Since we're usually the aggro deck, making the opponent lose life is a nice upside. It's also a great way to enable Spectacle for the spawn of Mayhem, which we'll get to in a second. And uh, just drawing more cards, making sure we can hit our land drops and assemble these powerful synergies between large creatures and Embercleave is pretty important. And then the card draw from Stormfist Crusader also helps us offset the uh, card disadvantage from Rotting Regisaur, which at the beginning of our upkeep makes us discard a card, but if we're empty-handed we can stack the triggers from Regisaur and Crusader in such a way that we first discard from an empty hand and then get to draw a card, so we don't have to discard the card we just drew from the Crusader, which is nice. And then of course a 7-6 creature is very large, especially combined with Embercleave, it can uh, very easily end the game. Then we also have the full playset of Bonecrusher Giant, giving us a bit of interaction with the 2-mana Adventure Stomp, dealing 2 damage to any target. And then afterwards we can still cast a 3-mana 4-3, which is pretty good. And whenever it becomes targeted by a spell, the Giant will deal 2 damage to that spell's controller. So despite being a deck that's almost only creatures, we still have quite a bit of interaction with the opponent, which is nice, between the Giant's Stomp ability, the Paragon being able to be played at instant speed and maybe ambushing a creature or being used as a combat trick, and then Embercleave, of course, being able to play that at instant speed during combat and use it as a trick as well is pretty important. 
And then we also have two copies of Rankle, which can also interact with the opponent despite being a creature. As a 4 mana 3 3 Flying Haste, Legendary Fairy Rogue. And when Rankle deals combat damage to a player, we can choose any number between each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card, and each player sacrifices a creature. Now we don't have a ton of creatures we necessarily want to sacrifice with Rankle, but sometimes it's okay to sacrifice a Butcher and deal damage to an opponent, but for the most part we're interested in the discard ability, especially if we're already empty-handed, because then it's no longer symmetrical. And then sometimes we can also use the card draw and life loss from the second ability just to kind of burn the opponent out if the one damage ends up mattering. Then we also have the full playset of Spawn of Mayhem, which is in the 4-drop slot, but uh, we can usually play it for 3 mana, thanks to Spectacle, so we can cast this spell for its Spectacle cost rather than its mana cost if an opponent lost life this turn, and our deck has a lot of ways to achieve Spectacle by turn 3, of course the most straightforward one being the Crusader, which deals 1 damage to each player, but also just being able to attack with Knight of Ebon Legion on turn 3, the opponent is unlikely to block it, you get in for 1 damage, enable Spectacle, and then play your Spawn of Mayhem, which is a 4-4 Flying Trampler, or Flampler if you will, that at the beginning of our upkeep deals 1 damage to each player, and then if we have 10 or less life, we can also put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Spawn of Mayhem, so Spawn of Mayhem is another great target for Embercleave to help us close out the game. And then moving on to the mana base, I should preface this by saying that I don't think the mana base in this deck is very good sadly, since we don't have enough untapped dual lands to really curve out perfectly, and of course the more tapped dual lands we add, the clunkier our curve will be and the less consistent we can uh, curve out in this deck. So right now I'm running two Bloodfell Caves which come into play tapped and gain a life, as well as of course the four Blood Crypts, seven Mountains and nine Swamps. I've also tried Fabled Passage instead of Bloodfell Caves, but we do have some pretty severe mana requirements between the Spawn of Mayhem on turn 3 being double black and then Embercleave being double red, so sometimes Fabled Passage isn't good enough and we would much rather just have a uh, black red dual land instead, even if it does come into play tapped on turn 4 as well. But for the most part, we're more worried about the uh, first three turns of the game and uh, our lands coming into play tapped there, at which point we might as well play Bloodfell Caves over Fabled Passage. And while Tournament Grounds is great at helping us cast these early knights, even helping us with the double red on Embercleave, it doesn't help me cast a turn 2 Dreadhorde Butcher or a turn 3 Spawn of Mayhem, so it does have a few issues there as well. So we could potentially improve the mana base with Tournament Grounds if we're willing to cut the Dreadhorde Butcher and the Spawn of Mayhem, which I'm not quite willing to do at the moment. But uh, yeah, the mana base is probably the major thing potentially holding this deck back. As soon as we get another black-red dual land that comes into play untapped a reasonable amount of the time, then uh, this deck could become a real menace. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, well, if we can start with a Blood Crypt in every opening hand, we'll be fine. So this is a pretty good hand. Can even attack into a goose and flash in the paragon if they block. Please do it. Ah, oh, pelt collector. Well, I should probably kill that. So let's attack, and I don't think they'll block. So next turn I'll be attacking with two creatures, which is enough to enable Embercleave. And if they block differently, then I can maybe do something else. So I gotta wait until after blocks. No, that's... That's a weird block, so now I can just kill both by pumping my knights. So I don't have to Amber Cleave here. Like, I could hit them for 10. How do I lose from there? I guess Collision, Colossus would kill my demon. 
So yeah, that would be bad if I go for an Ember Cleave here. Yeah, let's just pump. Alright, 5-5 five, five Hellkites, so we're hoping they block my Spawn of Mayhem, basically. Or my Fervent Champion, thanks to the Paragon giving Death Touch. So let's get in there. Nah, that was a pretty good Ember Cleave. So we're missing double black here, but it's still definitely a keepable hand. Interesting, steam vents plus champion, that's not a combination I've seen before. Now the unfortunate part is that if they leave champion back, I don't get to hit them with the butcher, but then I'll just play crusader first. We do have double red for amber cleave. And now a double black as well. Crusader helps me offset the Regisaur and helps me dig towards Embercleave. Oh yeah, this might be the Science uh, Knights deck I've seen floating around. Black Red Knights splashing blue for the Science. Well, opponent's taken quite a bit of damage off their mana base so far. And they're gonna take two more damage. Alright, now you're speaking my language. I kind of like just smooshing here over playing Regisaur. Playing Regisaur is pretty bad if they have another rider. And smooshing gets in quite a bit of damage. Enough damage to make my opponent explode, apparently. Well, haste is a powerful keyword. And yeah, Blood Crypt. We're missing the 1-drop, but we only have 8 in the deck, so we can't realistically expect a 1-drop in every hand. We're on the play, which makes Butcher quite a bit better. So we'll try. Alright, that's... Uh Kind of the worst case scenario here. Think I'm okay trading. Alright. If Regisaur and Butcher live, then I can Ember Cleave my opponents on the following turn, which could just like kill them, but. I don't know how likely that is to work out. Close decision. So, Cleave looks good. Alright, points letting me hit them. So do I play Regisaur now, or do I cleave them anyway? Nah. I'll try it. Amber Cleave plus Dreadheart Butcher is quite a combo since you get to grow it twice. Nice 6-6 six, six double strike trample. I'm getting more and more excited about the deck. Alright, now we've had our first hand with uh, potential mana issues. 
We've gotten uh, pretty lucky so far to have functional hands, but we gotta get used to these hands as well. So we're on the play, missing a third land for this hand to be potentially okay, as I can set up Paragon into Spawn and or Regisaur. We'll try it for science. Alright, well, gonna need a, a land here, some sort of gate deck, oh no, the Grazer. Well, at least the Paragon can attack past it. What are you gonna do? Feels like I'm too far behind now. The ferry, pretty good here. The ferry is also very good against Black Lance Paragon because if they play the ferry, like you're forced to play your Paragon and then they just bounce it. But it's better than skipping your turn, I guess. Missing the third land combined with a good start from our opponent, presumably here, if they play their land means we're probably not winning this one. Imagine drawing an Amber Cleave here with no red mana. Alright, I did draw the mountain. So I could Crusader plus Knight or I could play one of the threes depending on whether the Paragon hits. I'm gonna go face here. There's easier ways to kill Teferi later. So I could spawn of Mayhem, which doesn't get chumped as easily. Or I could Crusader to draw more cards. Playing Knight in a turn where we dealt for damage is also more appealing than playing it now. Yeah, that is true, Crusader does enable Spawn of Mayhem. So it was definitely a close call. Alright, no goal loss at least. But a field. And do we see a zombie already? Probably do. And what's our opponent holding here? Just a growth spiral. Trying to make a zombie at instant speed. Well, the giant can... Uh, Intervene. Alright, oh, the ferry. Yeah, we can't stomp at instant speed. I guess uh, that's not gonna work. So, do we even want to attack with my Paragon? I mean, it's probably gonna end up trading for a zombie at some point anyway. It's mostly that Paragon would be like an extra attacker for Ember Cleave, but I guess with the ferry around, I also can't flash in Ember Cleave to begin with. So Pun makes a zombie. And the chum block with the grazer kind of makes me think that they might have a sweeper lined up, so let's just do this. Not happy about it. So the spawn of mayhem gives us a bit of hope as kind of an evasive threat that can fly past the zombies. And then if I can find a rankle or a fourth land for rankle, that definitely helps as well. Second to ferry. Knight is gonna get blocked by a zombie, so it can't enable spectacle for spawn of mayhem. So, probably just need land for Rankle here. But yeah, even if I draw Ember Cleave, I can't cast it. Both because of no double rent and because of Teferi. Alright, so I can Rankle. 
Where does that leave me? Can hit my point for three. Don't really want to trade knight for zombie. I don't mind discarding since we've got a bunch of bad cards in hand. And then I could draw, but making my opponent draw when they have this many lands in play seems like a bad idea. So the one damage here is appealing, but making them draw seems like a bad idea. So I'll just make everyone discard. Sure. So one register can definitely go. Beanstalk. So Rankle giving us a bit of hope. Trust me, I have a plan. Take two. And there's goals. Well, The flying creatures are gonna have to get the job done here. So my opponent can beanstalk giant at instant speed, so making them discard doesn't do anything. So instead, I don't think I can take a turn off attacking to fairy, just gotta go face, play spawn, and hope for the best. So I'm putting my opponent to 9, play spawn, spawn puts him to 8. And grows, let's see, it's not going to grow unless my opponent sends in everyone. But then I can just deal one damage next turn instead of this turn to finish them off with a rankle trigger. So I don't have to deal the one damage now. So not going to do anything. Play spawn. Yeah, my opponent does get a lot of looks if they activate Golos. So we're unlikely to get there, but if my opponent finds like four lands or ramp spells, then technically I could kill them here. Not even sure if playing Knight of Legion was really necessary. Probably not. Alright, um, doesn't matter what I do here, taking 12, which means the spawn will also grow. Can chump two zombies here if I want to, still take enough for spawn to grow. In case I have a sweeper, I don't know. Don't think it matters at all, but... Not blocking with Spawn of Mayhem in case they somehow have like Deafening Clarion in their deck. Well, those don't uh, kill my creatures. Did we somehow get there? Embercleave we can't cast for several reasons here, but uh, yeah. Let's go face. Well, I thought we were dead for sure, we missed our third land drop, didn't have red for a while. But I guess we got kind of lucky that our opponents didn't find anything more relevant with uh, Golos. Well, we haven't lost a game yet, so that's pretty impressive. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.